Hi, this is Diane Love to Bake on YouTube. And what we're going to make today is a cake. But we're going to make a four layer cake. And it'll actually come out like a loaf cake, cake but the layers are very, very thin. Now what I'm going ahead is I'm using this pan, which you will spray with your favorite oil spray or you know if you want to grease them but the spray is much easier and quicker and i'm going to get four um actually layer cakes out of it now if you don't have these particular pans to make this cake feel free and use um two eight inch round that are two inches tall and it'll, it, you know, you, you'll have a great tasting cake. So if you don't have the pans, don't wish to buy these special pans, like I said, it'll make a great golden layer or yellow cake batter uh, for a cake. Uh, again, two eight inch rounds at two inch tall if you don't have the little pans or that kind of thing. So let's get started. It's a pretty easy recipe to make this yellow batter or golden cake and uh, you'll see in just a, a, a few seconds. Also, I want to tell you right off the bat, I'm sorry I no longer put the recipe below the video, but hopefully I will go through the directions and the recipe slowly enough, clearly enough, that you'll be able to jot it down, that type of thing, okay? So first, let's start off with a half a cup of butter. Now, I have made this cake with butter and with margarine. Believe it or not, I know a lot of people aren't a fan of margarine, but it has come out very, very good. Um, so that's going to be up to you whether or not you're going to use butter. I prefer to use butter for this cake, but if you don't have butter, don't like the butter, whatever it is, you can use uh, margarine. Now I cut that up into small pieces and I'm going to turn my mixer on. I want to give you a heads up. The mixer can come off very loud. So I'll, I'll give you a warning every time that I put it on so that you can, you know, uh, turn it down or take your uh, earbud out or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to just go ahead and cream uh, this butter and to break it up. Now I have the butter at room temperature and my kitchen is very warm today so I think everything is going to really uh, combine pretty pretty quickly. The next thing you're going to be putting in is a half a cup of oil. Now, you use whatever type of oil that you prefer. I just don't want to get into the debate because many people prefer whatever type of oil. You use whatever that you prefer. But I'm using a half a cup of oil which I'm going to beat together with that butter. So I'm going to turn on the mixer. also make this cake with a stand-up mixer if you prefer. I like to use the stand because I think it's much easier and faster for the video. Uh, the next thing, once you get that uh, beaten together and it's quite light and quite fluffy and it's yellow in, very pale yellow in appearance, you're going to start adding in slowly your granulated sugar. Now, you're going to be using one and a half cups of granulated sugar. And I'm going to warn you about the sound because I'm going to raise my speed. I normally beat it at that highest speed? No. I would probably stay around medium and it would take whatever that minute or that two minutes 
depending on your mixer, uh, how what speed you're putting it on, your hand mixer, but stay with it till it's well combined. But I like to speed it up because I don't want to keep you uh, watching this video too long. The next thing we're going to be putting in is four eggs. And I have had these at room temperature, and I'm going to uh, try to beat one in at a time. And as you can see, one of the eggs is already, it did kind of break there. So, and again, warn you about the sound. And I'm really trying to um, beat them in uh, one till, the, till we're ready, ready, really ready for the second. That was the second going in. And now the third. And the fourth. Okay. Now once again, stay with this mixture. Beat it till it seems very well combined. It looks light, it looks fluffy. I like to get to the bottom of my mixing bowl because it tends to stick under that paddle. And at this point, it will seem almost sort of like watery to you. We're also going to be putting a teaspoon of vanilla. And that won't take you very long to beat that in. It almost sounds like I have a little bit of a... No, I guess not. I thought a piece of... You know how granulated sugar, sometimes you get a little nugget in there that, that uh, wasn't loose. All right. The next thing that you're going to need is one and a quarter cups of milk. Um, and, uh, you know, go ahead, um, I have used skim milk, I've used 1%, I've used 2%, and they've all come out delicious. So, um, you need one and a quarter cup milk, which I have here. Um, now, let's talk about the dry ingredients real quickly. You'll need three cups of all-purpose flour. Um, I I uh, have not sifted this. If you are the type that you do like to sift all your flour, feel free. Uh, this particular flour and me making this cake, I generally don't sift it. But um, there's three cups is what you need. The next thing you're going to be putting in it is one tablespoon. Now I know some people will probably write and say, are you sure? Because, you know, I make mistakes, <laughs> but it is one tablespoon of baking powder. The next thing you're going to put in is a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And then I'm just using my little whisk here just to give it a little quick stir. You don't have to be real fussy with it, but just to combine it together. And what I'm going to attempt to do is to add the dry and then add the milk in combination a little at a time, okay? So we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and start putting that dry in there, okay? And then a little bit of milk. And then I'm going to keep beating it till it becomes smooth. I don't want to overbeat it. Whatever it takes, it might take two minutes, it might take three, depending on your mixer, depending on the speed that you're using, but you want it smooth. And then, of course, when it's time to add some more of the flour, do that, and as you see, we're just alternating back and forth. ready to put more and and the reason I I'm doing that of course and I'm sure you know yourself is that I don't want big clumps so it'll you know combine together quicker um, and it will be smooth a smooth batter 
but I don't like to overbeat my batters either because I really believe it makes a, a cake uh, uh, tough, uh, that it becomes uh, dense, and you, and you just don't want that in a cake. And now I'm just going to mix it till I know it's smooth and it's well combined. Once again, do I, would I use that high of a speed? No, but I'm doing it uh, purposely for the video. And again, checking on the bottom where it tends to stick, cleaning up my sides. I'm just going to um, turn that on just a couple more seconds here. I said it, it you know it might take you you know it generally takes about maybe two minutes on medium and now I'm just taking out my paddle taking off my excess and then I'm gonna set that aside and clean the sides get to the bottom check for smoothness for no lumps or bumps and then I'd like to show you the silky batter that comes out of it and I, I hope you can see that uh, it's almost you know ribbon like very smooth all right it smells good too <laughs> so then you'll take if you are using these pans or have them what I do is just use a half a cup I kind of eyeball it and I just basically put that half a cup into the center like that. I'm not too, too fussy with it. And then I just spread it out. If I feel that I need more, I'll go back for more. Um, I would say you're going to put a, 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 well, a little less than, a little less than half. And I do need a little more, so just eyeballing it here. Okay, you do want to use all the batter for all the um, the little four trays, and just work. Make sure that you work it into the side, the edges, I should say, and the sides and the ends. And then when you start filling your second and your third, you're going to be able to visualize and say, well, I've got more left. I'm going to have to add this one looks a little lower or whatever. It doesn't have to be super, uh, you know, perfect, but you'll, you'll, you will be able again to um, see and eyeball if it needs more or less or that type of thing. Now, these cakes bake up, I feel, very, very quickly. And you're going to bake them at 350 degrees and they can take you anywhere from 16 to up to 18 minutes now depending on your oven you know as we know our all our ovens are set up so differently um, and um, you be the judge of that but I would I start checking mine honestly uh, about uh, 10 to 12 minutes to see because you don't want to dry them out uh, because they are so thin they're going to bake up very very quickly so I'm not going to bore you by filling the other three pans but you get the idea okay and I'm going to quickly rinse my hands because I'd like to show you I want to just I don't want to handle a cake after I've had my hands on an egg mixture. Now, this is how they're going to turn out once they're, they are baked up. Um, what I like to do is I make um, about two of these. I, I actually double the recipe uh, because I'm either, you know, going to have guests over or I'm giving them to a friend or whatever the case may be. Uh, so I actually double my recipe. But anyway, this is how they'll come out. They'll have a nice a golden brown to them. You, um, you'll be, they'll be, um, 
very easy for you to handle where they're not just you know breaking apart um, and that type of thing now you might experience where they will you know puff up on you if they do or maybe you put more into your pan um, then of course just take a you know your knife or your serrated knife or whatever you prefer and just lop that top off if they do come out where you feel oh my gosh they're not you know they're not flat enough that type of thing now if you wrap them well and put them in a sealed uh, container or um, Ziploc bag you can freeze these and I can actually I freeze them with frosting I freeze them without frostings and I generally though try to use them up within Not more than two months even two months is kind of pushing it if it's in the freezer uh, So um, in case I do get questions about you know, can you freeze them? Yes, I do it. I do it all the time Okay, now I have one also to show you and oh and by the way just you know put it on whatever plate you want and then put your frosting you know put the other one on top to assemble them you know all all four um and i would say just uh depending on the type of um frosting that you're using you know i would gauge you know three cups maybe even four cups of frosting it really depends on uh, your frosting and, and how thick it is and, and how thick you want it to be. So uh, here's one that I assembled and I just um, put on some sprinkles. You don't have to do that. That's very optional. And then when you slice it, I'd like to show you, you will see those four layers. Now, if you feel that you're filling, you want it uh, thinner or thicker, that's going to be up to you of what type of frosting, what flavor frosting that you you would um, like to um, uh, put on it. And then let me try to show you maybe a closer view of that uh, loaf cake showing. Let me see if I can lift it for you and see the four layers again. You decide if you if you want the frosting to be thicker between the layers, that kind of thing. You're just going to use more frosting, and uh, again, decorate it however you want. Um, and um, it, it's a great little tasting cake. Uh, it's just doing something out of the norm rather than making square cakes or round cakes all the time. And that's what I like it. It's a little change of pace uh, to make this cake. Well. There you have it. It's a pretty easy recipe. And as I mentioned, it bears repeating. If you don't have these pans, feel free. Use those two eight inch, um, two inches tall, eight inch round pans. And it makes a great tasting uh, cake, uh, yellow batter cake. It really does, okay? Well, I want to thank you for watching Diane Love to Bake. Uh, if you're so inclined and you'd like to subscribe to my channel, well, I can't thank you enough. Or ring the bell. Again, many, many thanks for taking the time and watching Diane Love to Bake. Oh, and by the way, the reason that I'm no longer putting the recipe on, it's, and I'm not alone on that, that's for sure, but you get, I get tired of seeing my work being claimed as other uh, other people's work posted and pinned and when people write to me and if you have a question you have a comment I will do my best to answer in a timely fashion but if my work is you find it and it's not on YouTube because it's the only place I put my videos on it's so frustrating that I can't answer you and that's what prompted me as I've seen so many other youtubers just to stop putting the recipe on. So I'm sorry about that, but that is the reasoning. And if I bored you with giving the reasoning, many people do want to know and ask me. So that's the only reason that I took up the time to explain that to you. So once again, thanks again for watching. Diane Love to Bake on YouTube. Stay well and stay safe, and I'll see you soon.